G'day viewers, welcome to Bremen on the Bremen Oldenburg route, brand new to Transim World 3. This is a tutorial on how to drive the beast in front of us, the nice vintage looking BR110. It kind of reminds me of a Volkswagen Splitty Combi. There you go. It's got the scissor pantographs on the loco, so it's the first one in the game with those. Let's get going. Let's open the door. Now I should point out this is an early access version. So it may be just a little bit different when you see it. I want to show you one of the things that's um, a little bit of a niggle with this one. Normally you've got your climb down. If you're in just the wrong spot in the cab, let me try and find one, you end up with enter cab instead of climb down. And if you press it when it's enter cab, you just end up back in the middle again, and then you can climb down. So if it's a bit weird, that's why. Don't worry about it too much. Just thought I'd show you that in case you get stuck. You can't go into the uh, machine room in the back of the train, unfortunately. It'd be nice. I always like looking in there. There is the brake mode with R, P, and G. You want that in R for most passenger runs, so you can just leave it there. There's a pantograph selector you can fiddle with if you want to, and you can have rear up, front up, both up, both down. You won't get far if they're both down, just saying. Now, this is a tutorial with safety systems, so let's turn on the periodic scream at you safety system, Stifa that wants to make sure you're awake. Then we've got you turn your train into a robot safety system, LZB. I'm going to turn that off again because Bremen Oldenburg doesn't actually have LZB. Now that this loco does, no I don't want to give it up. This loco does, but if you're on a route with LZB it'll work, otherwise not on this one. PZB, where you have to behave yourself and not speed and stay under the speed limit and acknowledge your signs and signals, is now turned on. All right, let's look around the cab a little bit so we can set things up. We're going to put our reverse handle in by clicking the middle here and then using whatever your normal favorite control is to get your reverser into forward. That'll let you open the doors. Now I've used the, uh, the key, but you can also use the switches if you want to. Next thing I want to do, the trains put the brakes on by itself because the doors are open, but I'm going to turn on my brake key and I'm going to apply my driver's brake a little bit. Two reasons for doing that. I don't want the train to roll away while the doors are open. But I also wanted to show you that these two handles move in unison. They're linked together. This is the air brake, the driver's brake, which applies the air brake throughout the entire train. And it's linked to the dynamic brake. So the harder you brake with the air, the harder it'll brake on the dynamics as well. Now the dynamics are the electric braking, which use the motors to generate power, and it either pushes it back into the grid or it sort of burns it up with resistors. Now you can move them independently as well. And once you do, the dynamic brake is no longer linked until you release the driver's air brake. And then when you apply it again, they're linked again. Now, it wouldn't have released the uh, air brakes completely then because the doors right now are open. So let's put in our master and instrument lights. That turns on these and gives you the power to put your headlights on. Signal lights normal, we'll just leave those alone. But you can also go to reduced. And you can have a nifty little desk lamp if you want it. Down here, there's an emergency brake if you care to use it. There's C for acknowledge, contact signaler. Got our usual for PZB, PZB acknowledge. PZB release and PZB override. Here's one you're going to get to know. It's going to be your friend. So right now we can see that we've got voltage so our train line power is on. If you blow the main circuit breaker, which you will in this train, it's not a fault, it's just going to happen to you, then you need to flip this one. We'll make that happen in a moment. We are pretty much ready to go. Oh, a couple of things to show you. Wipers. And there's a little speed control next to them to make them go faster or slower. It's an air operated thing, so it's the switch. Let me just get that parked over on the right there. It can be a bit annoying to get it in the right place. You can also move it manually if you want to. Same over here. There's a switch and a little speed thingy. Alright, let's get the doors shut. So use whatever method you usually use for your doors. Whatever makes you happy. Brakes off. And looks like the brakes are releasing, so let's tap up. And of course, we're in a hurry, aren't we? So let's tap up a lot. And we're watching our power climb and climb and bang. Hmm. 
Can we just blew the circuit breaker. So let's take that back down to here, back to zero, and turn our main circuit breaker back on. You notice a nice big thump, and you can power again. You've got to power up gently. It's safe to release, so we'll do that. I've just passed under a signal which I acknowledged while I was messing around then. Because there's one right there, just as you start off. You're literally on the magnet as you start driving. Now I released from monitoring, so we don't have to do 25. We have just got a thousand hertz magnet, so I've acknowledged that. Now we have to, we are limited to 45 again. So you can see with the 85 flashing here, that noise is safer. Everything happens at once when you've got safety systems on. So learn the train without them first pretty important otherwise life gets a little bit awful if you're trying to learn at the same time all right so we can tap up a bit so if you tap up gently just a couple at a time and you watch this power meter because if it gets much above 40 or so you'll blow the breaker when that happens you just have to reset it it's fine it's safer again you can tell it's safer because the little red Sorry, the yellow light comes on. And you get the sound. So I'm going to tap up. The tap changer is not particularly compatible with the rail driver. It tries to be. It doesn't work fantastically well. I find it moves it a bit too far and sometimes not far enough. It's just the rail driver itself. It's just a finicky beast for again on the next go with SIFA I'm going to show you what happens if you don't acknowledge it I'll show you how to get out of it I'm just watching my speed I'm keeping it at 30 because we have to stay under 45 kilometers an hour so 30 gives me a nice margin in case I mess it up That's the whole point of this is to get through the tutorial and not mess it up Again. Might have had a few takes. Alright, Cifa's going. And it's now stopped us, so we have to back to zero and acknowledge Circuit Breaker and tap up a couple. Now I've found sometimes it blows the Circuit Breaker and sometimes it doesn't. That one didn't give me the big thump, so it probably didn't. And the brakes are coming off, taps are okay, and we'll start moving. Momentarily. I'm betting we're going uphill, there we go. You've got to be very patient with this old train. Just let it do its thing, it'll be fine. Tap up a bit more now. A bit more. Now this is a tutorial of how to use PZB and CIFA in the train, not a tutorial on PZB. There's plenty of those around on the internet. This signal coming up is warning me that we're coming into a 50 zone, that's what the 5 means. I don't have to acknowledge that one though, because there's no magnet there. There's Sifa. And the next one's telling me with the white five on top that we're in a 50 zone and the next zone will be 60. So even if this one did have a magnet, we wouldn't have to acknowledge it because it's telling us the speed's going up. We only have to acknowledge when the speed's going down. And we're safe to release. Yay! So Let's release that. That happened when we went past the green signal. So we can start speeding up. FIFA. Now this train is a bit of a handful to be honest with you. And I just didn't acknowledge my PZB in time. Alright, let's acknowledge that release from the braking. Our brakes will come off shortly. 
and just wait for that to happen. You can see they're applied on the gauge over here. So when they start to come down, there we go. They're coming down, you can hear the compressor running, so we can start tapping up just gently. Just enough to take control of the train with the brakes coming off. Just wait a little while, we'll see how that copes. Takes a little while to pump the train up. Alright, we are indeed starting to move. So let's go another tap. Now, interestingly, I'm not quite sure why we're actually restricted there, because... I thought we were going up in speed. I will ask about that. Well, just the same as before, tap up gently. One at a time, I'd suggest. Gradually picking up speed here. We're back to being limited to 45 again. We're going uphill here, I think. We just turn on the HUD. We are indeed going uphill. Sefa. I don't normally run with the HUD on because I try and get used to the route. But, uh, I just wanted to show you that we're going uphill, that's why it was having a hard time getting going. Now I can't accelerate too hard because we have to stay under 45 kilometres an hour. So just a bit at a time. Sifa. We shouldn't have to acknowledge this signal. And it's safe to release because we've gone through the green, so let's release that. And we're no longer in monitoring. Just brought our taps down a little bit. There's a lot of cool things to look at on this route, but you need to take a little while to get used to the train before you're going to get a chance to look at the things on the route. Unless you run without safety systems and then go for your life. Now this thing's brakes are quite impressive. Quite nice brakes. Yeah. So even a nice gentle brake like that, um, yeah, stops pretty quick. Loading, loading, loading. Be able to get going in at the moment. I tapped down to zero before I braked. If you don't, you'll be interlocked. Let's release the brakes. They're coming down so we can start tapping up. Just like before, don't go too hard out of the gate. Let it do its thing. Two or three should be enough to get you moving on uh, most hills. You may need a little bit more. If you do, watch your power usage.
the old thing does take a little while to get going. Till you tap up too far. Just let it build a speed. C for acknowledge. So we're allowed up to 120 now. See it's starting to accelerate quite quickly now. So once you get up in the tap successfully, it actually accelerates pretty quickly, but it's a slow old start. There is no cruise control, it's all on you. You are the cruise control. And there's a lot to keep an eye on this one. There's so many gauges that move, it's uh, quite a handful. So I think it's quite challenging and quite fun. If you want to have less of a handful, then uh, run it without the safety systems until you're used to it. Alright, the next thing I want to show you is getting over an emergency break. So let's do one now. So, emergency brakes applied, tap change is coming down by itself. We can do that too, let's just bring our wheel back down to zero as well, see for again. Now once it stops, train stop nice and quick, brakes are hard on, even though your handles are off, because this is still open, so close that what you'll see is that your brake pipe will start pumping up and then your brake cylinders will start to release. There goes your brake pipe, the yellow one up there. Pumping, 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 pumping. And you should see, there we go, they're starting to release. So we should be able to tap up. Just go up to four and let it sit. There we go, we're starting to power. So recovering from emergency brake is as simple as that. No waiting, no boring timers. Take a little while to pump the whole train so the loco brakes are off. Train brakes are probably off by now. Tap up a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Just as a guide, as soon as you see that yellow needle on this gauge start to go down, it's pretty safe to tap up to another one. Don't get too carried away. A little bit far that time. D for again. Just keep tapping up until we get to line speed and that's where I'll end the tutorial. So I've shown you how to turn the safety systems on. I've showed you how to acknowledge your PZP. I've showed you how to release. Uh, I've showed you what happens if you blow the main circuit breaker, how to recover from that. I've showed you what happens if you don't acknowledge CIFR and how to recover from that. And I've shown you how to set an emergency brake and recover from it. So that's about all you really need to know to run this beastie. So, Enjoy yourselves. New loco, super cool. A lot of fun. And it just looks nice and vintage. I'll just get you up to the next station and we'll stop the tutorial there. I'm up quite high on the tap wheel now. Using probably 70% of the power. So just keeping a little bit of an eye on the speed. I'm going to have to start tapping down shortly. 
the usual keys for increasing and decreasing throttle work on the tap changer, the usual controls on your favourite platform controller also work. And if you didn't know, you can even use your favourite platform controller on the PC if you wish. Xbox and PlayStation both work with the appropriate drivers. I recommend the Steam drivers over the native Microsoft ones. I just find they work better. Because they let you uh, calibrate things a little. Yeah, we're not too far from Hyde Crook now. Safer. I'm going to tap down now and get ready to stop. Well, you'll find if you use the dynamic brake by itself, by the way, it doesn't do a lot by itself. But you can see, even at that level, it's not doing much. Not a strong dynamic brake. It gets stronger as it goes, I think. Let's just put that off and start air braking, or we're not going to make this. In fact, we're not going to make it anyway because we're not paying attention. If we're lucky, we might have one door in the platform and not go through the signal. Did we? Oh, I hate to think how close that is. Let's have a look. How close is it? Ooh, got one carriage. One carriage. If you're wondering why these doors don't open, it's a um, baggage or a goods area. You can open them if you want. Alrighty then. Nearly ended the tutorial on a net worth. Good done. Well done. If you've got any questions, put them down below in the comments and I'll uh, try and answer them for you. I hope you enjoy this route. I quite do. It's a bit of fun. And it's a a handful locomotive to drive, which to me makes it fun. Alright then, see you later.